بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and good day how is everyone um, I think we got uh, quite few number of students for this uh, session um, our subject is medical instrumentation uh, code is BEU 40503 um, one of the big uh, main reason that I'm recording these uh, lectures nowadays is uh, since we have uh, some people will have difficulties in uh, uh, being in the online classes and some people they will have uh, some connections and then later on the connection will go away <laughs> uh, the connection will break down or something will happen and then therefore um, you cannot be uh, in the lecture so I think it's a good idea if I can uh, uh, record my session or the class so that uh, you can always listen to the lecture after the lecture or whenever is the, the time permits so you can come back and uh, always refer back to the to the recordings right so as usual, even though our class is online, uh, whatever happened, the changes, um, I'm sure you are mainly the, what we call senior student. This subject is taken by the senior students, uh, final year students, uh, or the third year or fourth year students. Therefore, you are quite familiar with the, with the specialized uh, subject. This is among one of the specialized subjects. So we're going to learn about uh, medical instrumentation. All the instrumentation or how is the functionality of medical instrumentation. Um, you might have learned about um, general instrumentation, control instrumentation. But now we, we will try to look at some instrumentation that is linked to the human body. For example, if we have a, a sensor is connecting to the human body, how the signals, how the signals, how the body signals will be transferred through the sensor, physical transducer. I mean, the signal will be processed and then recorded or pre-processed or amplified until the sensors uh, picked up signals which can be understood by a layman, for example. Uh, because the signals or the waveform that we received from the human body, it will be in, a, in a, what we call mini volts or a very small amount of voltage of frequencies. So therefore, how we can make um, people, normal, I mean the people who are non, non-engineering non people, how they can understand what is this waveform is telling us. So in this subject, the interesting part is we will learn about the instrumentation, especially for medical equipment. That means the sensors will pick up the signals and then the signals will be pre-amplified, processed, digitalized uh, from analog to digital and then interfaced, uh, produced in the LCD screen or interface in the computer. So where, wherever is uh, possible for data um, interfacing until it can give you uh, some uh, values or numbers. For example, let's, let's take uh, an example. I'll give an example. Um, if we have uh, air con system in home, so you are using air con system, air condition, and then the air con becomes, suddenly becomes too cold. So how are we, we going to change this situation? So we need to know um, what is the room temperature now, right? We need to know what is the room temperature. So if we can, uh, if we are able to detect the room temperature, let's say it is uh, 16, 17 
or 80 degree then we can change the the what we call the temperature in the room so for that you need a, a thermometers or a sensor system that can shows you so normally what we have a remote control remote control that shows the temperature in the room is a digitalized information so it shows you the the numbers is 17 19 or 18 similarly when you pick up some uh, signals from the human body you should be able to translate it into a number into a uh, uh, counting counting uh, sequence is either 0 or 1 for example pulse rate when you measure the pulse in the finger right uh, in our finger when you put that clip right so the blood is passing through the fingers is can, uh, can be monitored or can be uh, recorded can be counted right the number of pulse uh, so how how do we calculate this pulse is by the the blood is being pumped through the fingertip from the heart until towards the end of the fingertip so this blood flow correspond to the pumping of our heart that mean normally we have 60 to 70 beats per minute so this 60 to 70 beats per minute uh, is is a normal person's heartbeat sometimes people can go up to uh, 80 or 90 but for athletes athletes like uh, what we call the, the famous one Usain Bolt let's say for example Usain Bolt you have he he might have his uh, heart rate uh, is down to 40 40 beats per minute so that's why he can run so fast in the uh, what we call in his uh, uh, i forgot what's the uh, in the sprinter run okay so that is the the main aim of the subjects in medical instrumentation we will expose the student to a uh, few parts of the instrumentation theory and uh, design theoretical part and also the design part but to start off with um, uh, we don't have much chapter uh, it's a total of 6 chapters right it's a total of 6 chapters i'll explain one by one um is starting with um, in uh, introduction to the subjects uh, same way like what i was just doing now there will be more uh, a little bit details on the uh, introductions uh, and then we will look at the non clinical support services in the hospital uh, especially in malaysia so in hospitals they have uh, clinical support and also non clinical support what is the usage of uh, non clinical support there are so many um, examples of uh, companies that they are doing uh, this uh, non clinical support for example example um, advanced packed um, ready care uh, one of my favorite qms uh, quantum medical solutions uh, medivest so so many others right so there are few um, services offered by these companies so we look at the the details because what is the aim is our graduates from medical electronic engineering uh, as the student who is taking this subject uh, inshallah when you complete the course um, potentially you will be working with one of these companies so when you go for the uh, interviews and when you go for this, this real job you are able to identify where do you suit to the job or you belong to the job right so we will look at the non clinical support services apart from that um we will also look at the biomedical engineering uh, maintenance part uh, bems in, in in short form they call it bems uh so what 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 uh, what are the maintenance uh is done by the biomedical engineering section that after that there are also more uh, technical subjects this uh, technical chapters that we will look at the um electrical uh, safety part 
right? Because uh, when we work with the instrumentation, uh, it is not same like what the instrumentation of control or mechatronics or other parts uh, of the machines that people are working on. We are working on the medical instrumentation. Main in most of the cases, ninety nine. Uh, 99 percent we are dealing with the human being right we are dealing with the human being so uh, when it comes to the human being there is extra precaution that we don't want to create any sort of damages to the people who are the users and also whom we use the machine on so we will have an introduction on this part um, electrical uh, effect on physiology micro and macro shocks and uh, uh, some part on electrical safety mm, other than that uh, basic approach basic approach on electrical uh, shock protection types of leakage current right so there are a few types of leakage current and we will learn at least uh, three to four uh, types of leakage current important Important codes and uh, standards. Excuse. Me. Important uh, codes and uh, standards. So, there there are specific codes for the uh, uh, the machines, the instrumentation, the equipments that been used. Right? They are they have special codes, standards, and also class and type. There is two different things: class of medical equipment and also type of uh, medical equipment that's chapter two chapter three moving on to chapter three uh, this is a quite a big chapter uh, we want to look at the um, medical instrumentation and devices this is where we look at uh, the introductions and also um, some important parts on the design of medical instrumentation right so, you will be able to know um, uh, what what is the really real uh, what is the real meaning of medical instrumentation. So, why we call it medical instrumentation? Then, um, the sources sources of biomedical uh, biomedical medical signals, the signals that origin from the human body, there are types of them. So. What is the sources of biomedical signals? Then, basics. Uh, what are the basics of medical instrumentation? Um, general. Uh, I mean, we look at the general block diagram. There is a general block diagram, and also there is a, a, a specialized or advanced block diagram. That means we will have more components inside, uh, with the feedback loop and control loop. Okay. Um, and then there are also um, when it comes to the design of uh, medical instrumentation system um, there is a certain uh, what we call constraint general constraint right and uh, general constraint there, there are also some um, major constraint major constraint in the design of medical instrumentation system so we look at uh, some of the points on that and when we do some sort of uh, design of medical uh, instrumentation we also have this uh, feasibility analysis look at feasibility analysis the criteria for design of the system and then the commercial medical instrumentation development process we'll also look at how you actually goes to manufacturing and uh, development of the medical uh, equipment right uh, then, uh, when you design um, a medical device, there's also some uh, important points like uh, product specification, right? Uh, what are the specification you should put on the documents so that people will understand when they want to buy an equipment, this is the device that we want to buy. Uh, this is the device that is suitable for what we need, the function that we are looking for. So this specific specification should be there, right? So we will also look at how, how you put things on the product specific, uh, specification. And then what is the generalized uh, 
instrumentation uh, specification. There are also some generalized instrumentation specification. Apart from that, uh, we will also look at some types of uh, instrumentation, uh, types of medical instrumentation. In this chapter, uh, we will look at a few types of uh, instrumentation. For example, uh, few uh, equipments that been used in the uh, cell culture lab. So in the cell culture lab, there are few equipments that uh, mainly use, right? At least we look at three, four example on the cell culture lab. Uh, it will be interesting to know uh, what what they actually do in the cell culture lab and what are the equipments that we use and why this equipment is important. Uh, what are the important functions that they, they, they have in this lab, right? What is the role of this equipment in this lab, uh, cell culture lab, right? Um, other than that, uh, we will also look at uh, application of cell engineering, right? In cell engineering, what are the equipments or the instrumentation that been used in in uh, in studying uh, cell engineering, right? Cell engineering application. So, what are the equipments that been used? Um, I will also introduce the student to the one of the system known as um, uh, high voltage pulse generator HVPG, right? Uh, you can try to search on this high voltage pulse generator HVPG. What is the function of high voltage pulse generator, right? HVPG is a is a basically is a generator that uh, can produce high voltage and also low voltage. It has two functions and it functions according to the uh, pulse duration. Uh, it's, it's, uh, you, can, uh, you can send a pulse in a microsecond, right? In a microsecond. So basically what it does is this generator, it will create a pulse electric field. PEF, pulse electric field. This pulse electric field will be used to transmit uh, across cell membrane. It doesn't matter if the cell is in a single, uh, is a single cell or in a group of cells. Both can be excited. So they will be placed on the surface and we will have an, a specific electrode and through this electrode, the pulse electric field will be passed through the cell membrane. So it depends on your setting whether you want to use high voltage or you want to use low voltage. Also depending on the pulse duration setting. So this is the equipment. Uh, moving on from, uh, we will look at this, how this instrumentation uh, is being used for example, in cell engineering, the application. So how it plays a role in this uh, in these studies or in other studies. So uh, HVPG is being used in many other uh, application. For example, uh, dealing with uh, cell uh, inducement, right? In cell inducement, that means you can use uh, pulse electric field to excite the cell membrane so that they move faster on the surface. That means these cells, they can uh, progress much faster in proliferation to cover, for example, if you have a wound on the, on the surface, the cells will cover the surface much faster with the assist of pulse electric field. Right? That's only one example. But in our subjects, we will try to look at least three to four examples. Therefore, it is a very big chapter. So, um, uh, but it will be a very interesting chapter. Uh, I promise you it will be a very good and interesting chapter, inshallah. And uh, other than that, we will also look at um, high resolution imaging system. Uh, mainly on, uh, uh, for example, microscope system. 
for example atomic force microscope afm is called afm atomic force microscope so how you can uh, uh, what we call uh, look at the internal or the surface topological topological structures and the surface structures morphological structures using the system afm it can goes down to uh, down to the limit of let's say um, talking about uh, 10 nanometers uh, 10 nanometers right so similarly there are other systems as well scanning electron microscope right environmental scanning electron microscope and uh, we also have um, um, surface plasma microscope one of the studies that i was uh, i was involved uh, we, we used uh, uh, surface plasma resonance microscope system that uh, where you can look at cell attachment on surface and then how the cells actually sit on the surface and you can actually literally image uh, take an image or do the imaging at the interfacial or between cell and the surface interfacial interaction that's what they call interfacial interaction what is in between how the cells actually communicate between the cell membrane and also the surface that way they attach to so this is through this uh, <coughs> high resolution imaging uh, system other than that we'll also look at when you when you want to create the samples when you want to create samples for this high resolution imaging some of the system that we use is uh, surface patterning technique surface patterning technique involved in creation of master template using silica uh, silicon materials and the structures in you know, micron scales so how this can be uh, created so we look at the sample preparation as well uh, last but not least we will also explore on the cell electroporation studies cell electroporation studies whether you can uh, heal the cell or you can kill the cells there's two options if you choose to heal the cell you need to use certain settings parameters on the pulse electric field and uh, if you want to um, kill the cells you have also certain parameters that you have to set on the settings right therefore that's the end of chapter three right <clears throat> let's move on to chapter four in chapter four we will look at particularly uh, design of medical instrumentation this is uh, where i told in the earlier that we will look at the chapter three previous chapter is what we look at the theoretical part of a particular design of medical instrumentation but now once you know already about the um, the theoretical part so we're going to use this knowledge of theoretical knowledge to implement them on how we can design our own medical instrumentation now this is this will be interesting so you will learn in this chapter in this part on how to create uh, a medical instrumentation to solve a particular problem for example i will give you uh, i will give you one one uh, problem problem statement uh, for example um, okay let's say i i i have a patient uh, whom they he he has the difficulties in um, holding a cup because he has been uh, through this uh, uh, event of stroke for example he has he had a stroke so for this post stroke patient what we as a medical uh, electronic or medical instrumentation engineers we can help them to design a system that can help them to motivate them so we want to motivate them uh, we can help them to realize uh, so for example if they go for uh, physical therapy in the clinics in the hospital normally the therapies it takes very long time 
let's say three months, six months, and sometimes you don't see any uh, what we call changes. Or there is there there are changes, but it is hard to tell there is a changes because uh, sometimes patients they have so many things that they are thinking at the same time. But when they go through this uh, uh, what we call rehabilitation process, but they still need some sort of motivation. So what we are thinking is as a medical instrumentation engineers, <coughs> we will be able to help them by extracting the data and information from their, for example, the muscles, the fingers, the hands, the elbows, the movement of these parts during an exercise, record these signals in the computer and show to the patient, look, this is what you have been progressing. The first month you have improved 10%, second month 20% and third month 30%, right? So by showing them uh, what we call regular improvement uh, monthly or every two months or three months, you can show them every time they come for the exercise. So they are actually improving. How? They're improving their performance through this rehabilitation. So they will be motivated to continue further. Otherwise, there are so many people, they go for rehabilitation programs. But after one or two months, they just give up and they stay home. They say there's no, there's no much changes. Or after five, six months, they say there's not much changes. Actually, there, is, there are changes, but they cannot see with their bare eyes because the current system, what they use, there is no specific measurement system to show, to show them that they are actually improving their health, their bodily function. So, yeah, I will give you this one problem statement and you will try to come up with the design, right? So what are the instru uh, instrumentation or the electronics parts or the, the components that we'll use? Uh, mainly there will be sensors. You will have to choose um, an appropriate sensors, either LDR uh, or photodiodes or uh, IR base or what other types of transducers. So we will also explore on the flex sensors. So how we can use flex sensors to, to read the bendings of, of the hand movements, fingers and the hand reaction, elbow movements, right? Uh, flex sensors. And there also we will look at the um, properties of force sensor, right? where we can position the force sensor during the exercise process so that the patient uh, performance can be measured, right? So, positioning of sensor is really important, right? Uh, positioning of sensors is really important because if you put the sensor, sensors in the wrong place, then what happens is that you might end up in not getting any responses. But if you position the sensor in the right place, you will be able to notice uh, what we call, um, you will be able to notice uh, the right signals, movement or changes, right? So there will be some trainings, some uh, information I'll give you some uh, guidelines on how we can actually brainstorm. So where do we position the sensors? So at the end of that uh, exercise or the assignments, so there will be some assignments here. So you will be able to come up with your, with your own design proposed idea on uh, this is the, this is what I think as a medical instrumentation uh, that can that can assist a post-stroke patient in recovering their uh, hand function, for example, right? What other types of sensors we'll use? Uh, accelerometer. We'll also look at uh, accelerometer, uh, measure, which measures the acceleration process. And then uh, gyroscope, so you, you can also use gyroscope. But other than that, there are so many other uh, sensors that you can also explore. 
So these are the few example senses that we want you to master. I mean, you want we want you to understand the function at least when uh, anyone asks you when you go to work uh, if people ask you as a engineer can you design a system you can design on the spot that these are the sensors that i can position and where can i position them and from this positioning we can get this kind of result and this result will be processed and we can uh, uh, create a design through this uh, process so that's that's the aim of this subject and we will also look at few examples uh, design in rehabilitation engineering okay we will look at few example design in uh, rehabilitation engineering because it is in line with the the examples that i give earlier so in rehabilitation there are so many uh, what we call uh, so many parts that uh, a medical instrumentation engineers can uh, play a role so they can actually help in uh, improving the system in especially in monitoring part if you talk about monitoring part it, it is endless there are so many uh, tasks and projects that can be involved with the medical engin electronic engineering students so that's therefore we we have choose that uh, rehabilitation uh, types of uh, projects okay that's the end of chapter four okay moving on with the uh, uh, chapter five right Chapter 5, we have named it as uh, Therapeutic Devices. So, in this one, the, these chapters, we will look at uh, what, what is actually therapeutic devices, right? Why you call them as uh, therapeutic devices? So, there are so many examples. At least we will cover um, 7 to 8 types of uh, equipments. Right, there are, there are cardiac defibrillators, uh, pacemakers, uh, hemodialysis machines, um, infant incubator system, ventilators, and many others. So we look at a few example of this uh, system. And last but not least, we have chapter six. Chapter six. Uh, is mainly on patient monitoring system. So this uh, particular chapter is dedicated uh, just to emphasize on the importance of monitoring bodily signals, right? So in that event, we will look at the BPM machine, blood uh, pressure measurement machine, uh, the non-invasive uh, types, SPO2 device, uh, pulse rate measurement, <coughs> other that, uh, blood flow measurements, and, uh, ECGs, uh, EEG, electrocardiograph, right? ECGs, uh, the signals dealing with the human heart. We will also look at the EEGs, um, electroencephalogram. Uh, which deals with uh, uh, brain signals. So, how many channels are in EEGs? Um, what is the simplest channels uh, EEGs to the complex channels of uh, EEGs? And there are also um, EMG, electromyogram, uh, to study the uh, contractions of muscle signals muscles movements during exercise and uh, during a, a test or during a test subjects right respirate respiration uh, measurement system and these are all belongs to the patient monitoring system so we want to expose the student uh, to the all this uh, uh, monitoring uh, system so from that uh, we, we, we aim the student is uh, fully equipped with the uh, necessary knowledge for the subjects and uh, so you are uh, ready uh, for the industry to hire you uh, hopefully uh, when you complete the course. Right, that's the end of uh, chapter 6. So in total we have 6 chapters 
we should cover this in 14 weeks and hopefully this time is in online base so in this subject i will do it all in online and i will make this um, recording uh, available for you uh, so that you can uh, watch them uh, whenever you have time and especially if you miss the class you can watch them uh, at your own time but preferably you watch them during the um, you will attend the class session as well <coughs> right like other subjects uh, for this subject as well we will have the uh, assessment so normally uh, what's the normal assessment that they give is a quiz right um, uh, quiz uh, assessment test one test two and we will have a uh, assignment one uh, assignment one and also one uh, big project we call a project uh, so for the assignment we will choose a particular topic uh, we will uh, inform the student and you will have to find out about um, your own topics and you will verify with me whether the topic is okay or not before you pro uh, proceed with the assignment right and uh, assignments you will have to do your own uh, uh, report uh, powerpoint presentation so you will have an uh, online presentation uh, session uh, with me and uh, we will decide we will decide uh, you should do this uh, in a, uh, in a group or as a as an individual right uh, similarly uh, for the projects uh, it is also um, we will give you a scope of project and you will choose a particular title as well which later i will also uh, inform you in details what is the project about project will be mainly about choosing a particular instrumentation and you explore about the instrumentation design and similarly you will also have to uh, do a presentation on this uh, project so you'll have a powerpoint uh, slides report writing and also uh, an uh, online presentation so we'll all uh, see how the student uh, present their work and how they understand about the topic as well uh, so projects assignment uh, and then test one test two quiz and you will also have uh, final exam uh, so final exam <coughs> um, we, it will depend uh, sometime i will uh, create this final exam as a what we call summative assessment summative assessment because nowadays we are doing all in online sometime maybe it is quite difficult or not practical to do examination so we will do summative uh, assessment so for this summative assessment you will also submit uh, your written uh, uh, answer transcript uh, transcript of uh, answer so all is through online and and uh, that will also be part of assessment in the in the medical instrumentation uh, subjects so all together the assignments and tests everything will be 50% and your final exam will be 50% of the marks so all together is um, 100% uh, so our class is uh, every day uh, same day on Sunday uh, uh, Sunday so I hope all the students will attend the session and don't miss the class uh, as you know that if you miss a class you will have to um, read and understand by your own self again but always if you have a question you can you can ask me uh, we have a platform for our class our group our sections so that you can post a question so that i will pick up your question and i will answer uh, don't worry even though if it is online you cannot see me you cannot meet me but i will always be there send me your questions i will i will answer uh, your question accordingly and duly um, other than that uh, hopefully for those who don't know me 
My name is Dr. Muhammad Mahdi bin Abdul Jamil. I'm in the FKEE building in the seventh floor, uh, room number eight. So if you are in the university, make sure you come to see us after two weeks of quarantine. And uh, inshallah, and uh, other than that, uh, we don't have much uh, to discuss now. But this is this is sufficient for the start. Uh, actually, I I have uh, my own modules for these subjects, but this time I didn't get any chance to uh, print out these modules and so on. So I guess you guys can will be able to find out through this lecture. You will be able to find out the notes and extra information. So the learning the lecture part is is what I will do. But make sure you, um, once you know the, the topics that I've covered in the class, you have to spend more time. Actually, you have to spend more time finding information. Like you go uh, and uh, sit down. Once you know the topics, try to find research uh, materials, try to find papers, books, and also reading materials so that you are... Uh, well worse, you are clear about the topics that uh, I cover in the class, right? Don't just depends on what uh, I I give you in the online classes, but you have to find out more information, right? Uh, and also make notes so that uh, for every week you have your own notes, you, you jot down things so that you can always come back for revision, right? Don't just depend on the materials that I provide, but you also have to find out more uh, information for yourself, for your references. Use uh, book references, journals, papers, conference proceedings, and so many other uh, references. Okay. Uh, right. So we will hopefully meet for this 14 weeks. Um, this is our first class and... Uh, try to inform the other friends who are still not joining our group yet. So we have our WhatsApp group, ask them to join the WhatsApp group. And uh, hopefully um, check out online as well. I will post this video online in my uh, YouTube channels. So you uh, can always access there uh, my future lectures so that if you have bad uh, internet connections you can always come back to watch but nevertheless you have to attend the class uh, <clears throat> and uh, inshallah so hopefully i will see you next week thank you very much and uh, have a good day assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh so.